Most websites have login pages, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to hack them. So why target login pages? Well, behind every login page is access to confidential information or even administrator level access. This is gold dust for hackers. And as penetration testers or bug bounty hunters, it's extremely valuable for us as well. So how do we actually go about hacking a login page? Well, there are two main types of attack that we can use here, brute forcing and dictionary attacks. A brute force attack is where you try every possible password that exists. For example, we might start A, then AA, then AAA, then AAB, and so on and so forth until the correct password is found. Now, in theory, this will eventually find the correct password, no matter what it is. However, the time it can take can vary greatly. For example, if you're finding a five character password with only lowercase letters, this could take seconds. A 16 character password with numbers, uppercase and special characters, however, could take millions of years. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't have the patience to wait millions of years. This is why we use the second type of attack called a dictionary attack. A dictionary attack is actually a type of brute force. But instead of trying every single possible combination of letters, numbers and symbols, we use pre-built lists of possible passwords. You see, us humans are not as smart as we think we are. We tend to use passwords that are easy to type, easy to remember, and even reuse the same password over and over again. And as clever as you think you're being, unless your password is truly unique, it's likely to have been used many times before. So we can use lists of passwords containing words, phrases, and known passwords from past data breaches, and there is a good chance that we will find a match. Luckily, we don't need to type these passwords ourselves. There are plenty of tools that can do this for us, and probably the most popular is one called Hydra. Hydra is a free tool used to hack logins, and is what we're gonna be using today. So now let's move on to the hacking. We're gonna need a hacking machine, such as Kali Linux or Para OS, and we're also gonna need a test website with a login page for us to hack. Now you can set this up yourself with virtual machines and installing web servers, but luckily our sponsor for today's video has us covered. Hack the Box Academy provides real hands-on training with browser-based hacking environments, nothing to download or install, and ready to go in minutes. They have tons of great training available, including this one called Login Brute Forcing. This module is part of their Certified Bug Bounty Hunter training. This training path will take you from almost zero to hacking into websites in no time at all. So I'm gonna be using the Hack the Box Academy environment to show you how this all works. If you want to follow along, use the link below in the description to sign up. So here is our attacker's machine. And here is the website login that we're going to hack. As you can see, it's a pretty standard username and password page. Now we have our target. Let's see how we can use Hydra to find some credentials. Now our attacker machine is running Parrot OS from Hack the Box Academy, and it has Hydra pre-installed. If you're running Kali Linux, you should also have it. If you're using anything else, you may need to install it using APT or download it from their official GitHub. So let's look at the command format. There are a few bits of information here, so let's break this down. Hydra is a really powerful tool with many different options. This is the general format of the command that we need for this attack. Hydra specifies the tool. Dash L login or dash L file is the section that we tell Hydra what to put into the username field. We can use a lowercase L and specify a user account manually or we can use an uppercase L and use a list of usernames. Dash P pass or dash P file is the section very similar to the last one, but it tells Hydra what to put into the password field. Using a lowercase P tells us to specify the password and the uppercase P will use a password list. Dash U, this will try every username for each password. If we have a small username list and a large password list, this could dramatically reduce the time it takes to find the correct password. Dash F is pretty simple. It tells Hydra to stop trying to find passwords once the first match is found. 
We then need to add the IP address or the domain name of the target website, dash S to specify the port number of the target website, and the module section tells Hydra which modules to use. Now a module is a service to attack. So module examples are HTTP, Remote Desktop Protocol, SSH, and many, many more. This last part depends on the module you select. This example shows typical options for a HTTP attack which is what we're going to be doing today. Okay, so now we have the basis of our command, let's start writing this out. So first I'm gonna open a terminal. I'll make this a little bit bigger so we can see. Move this over here. And we're first gonna start with sudo because we want to run with elevated permissions. Then we type hydra. And now we need to choose either a specific username to try to attack or a list of possible usernames. Now a lot of the time you won't know anything about the target, nor do we have any known usernames. A good guess is there will be something like admin, administrator or something along those lines. So we could try our luck choosing the username ourselves, but we may be better off using a list of common usernames. There are lots of word lists available with common usernames. A great place for this is seclists, which has a ton of great word lists. It's already pre-installed in our Hack the Box Academy machine, but you can download it from their GitHub. So to tell Hydra we want to use a list of usernames, we use the command dash capital L and then the location of our word list. In our example, we'll use the word list located in opt useful Sec lists, usernames, and it's called top username shortlist. This word list contains some of the most common usernames. Next, we need to tell Hydra which passwords to try. Again, there are tons of password lists out there. One popular list is the RockU password list from a massive data breach back in 2009. This contains over 14 million passwords, ranging from very simple to more complex passwords. To use this list, we need to type dash capital P and then the location of our list, which for me is opt useful sec lists passwords leak databases and then rockyou.txt. Now, if you're not using Hack the Box Academy, then your list may be somewhere else, or you may need to download it. Then we type dash u to tell Hydra to try every username from our small user list for each password. This is rather than 14 million passwords for each username. Now we use the dash f to tell Hydra to stop looking once a match has been found. Now, if you're trying to find as many credentials as possible, then you may not want to add this bit. Now we need to add our target IP address or domain name and the port number. In our example, our IP address is here and we'll copy that, paste it, dash S for the port number. And as we can see, it's just here, copy, and we'll paste that as well. Perfect. Now this last part will need a bit more explaining. This is the module section where we tell Hydra what type of logging we're trying to attack, so it knows which techniques to use. Web logins like this are the HTTP post form module. So we type HTTP dash post dash and this will select that module. Then we need to add some parameters and we'll open that with some quotation marks. The first parameter is the URL of the login page itself. And we can see up here at the top, it's login.php. So we'll start with login.php. Then we just need to add a colon to separate the parameters. Next, we need to tell Hydra where to input the username and where to input the password. To do this, we need to find out the names of these fields. 
Now there are a few ways to do this, but one of the easiest ways is to open a program called Burp Suite. Now to do that, we go up to Applications, and I'll go to Pen Testing, Most Used Tools, and there it is there, Burp Suite. Click onto there. A couple of prompts will come up, just skip past those. Accept. Close. Temporary project is fine for this. Use the defaults, start burp. Burp Suite has tons of great website hacking tools, but the main one, and the one we're interested in today, is the proxy at the top. So proxy here. Using the proxy allows us to inspect all requests that are being sent to the web server. Before we can use the proxy though, we need to add the settings in our browser. To do this, we'll just go back to Firefox, select the menu, go to Preferences. Then at the top right, we'll just type Proxy. And where it says Network Settings, click Settings and Manual Proxy Configuration. And we're just going to use HTTP for this. And in the address, we'll type 127.0.0.1. And the default port number for Burp Suite is 8080. Click OK. And that's that saved. What this does is tell our browser to send all of the web requests to our proxy, where we can then view and even change them if we wanted to before they're sent to the web server. So now we're set up, we just need to enter some test credentials and we should be able to see the form input names. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on to username. I'm just going to type test. And for the password, again, I'm going to hit test. Now, when I click login, nothing will happen. It will kind of hang here. Nothing happens. But if we go over to Burp Suite, you'll see this is the request being sent to the web server. At the bottom, we can see our test credentials. And most importantly, we can see the login parameter names. So we have username and simply password. And we can use these for our Hydra command. So let's go back to our terminal. We'll type in username and to tell Hydra that this is where they input the user. We'll go equals up arrow user up arrow. Then we do the same for the password field by typing and to separate them, password equals, and this is where to input the pass information. Perfect. Now the last bit we need to do is tell Hydra when to know when a username and password is correct. If you think about it, Hydra won't know what a successful login looks like, right? So we need to tell it. This is the part that people tend to forget. So what we need to do is add another parameter to tell Hydra when to stop trying passwords. Now, because we don't know what a successful login looks like, meaning we don't know what happens when it logs in, we need to use something that we're pretty sure won't be there once we do log in. It's pretty reasonable to think that once we log in, that this login page won't be there. Now, if you think about it, there won't be any need for a login page once you've already logged in, right? So let's find the name of this login form. To do that, we'll just press F12 on the keyboard to bring up the developer tools. Select the inspection tool, and we can just move our mouse around until we select that form. So select that there, and we can read through here. We can see the name of the form is called login. So we'll use that to tell Hydra, hey, if you no longer see this login form, then that's a pretty good chance that that's a successful login. So to do that, we move over to our terminal. Again, we do a colon to separate the parameters. Then we need to do capital F for failure equals. And to say what a failure looks like, I'll add the name of our form, which is open bracket form name equals login. 
We then need to close our module parameters with quotation marks. So we now have the username list, the password list, the IP address, the port number, and our module options. When we press enter, Hydra will start trying lots of different passwords until a match is found. So I'll press enter. And of course I get an error. And that is because the login page should start with a forward slash. So the command should now look like this. Press enter. And Hydra will start to try lots of different passwords. As we can see, very quickly we receive a match. The login name is admin and the password is the very secure password of password1. Now this just shows how quickly we can crack simple passwords. Now in the real world, if this was a little bit more complex, this will probably take a little bit more time. So we can confirm this works just by going back to our login page, typing the username as admin, and the password is password1. And not forgetting to turn our proxy server off. So we can just turn this inception is on button off. And that's removed our name. So we'll again, we'll go admin password1. Hit the login button. As you can see, we have successfully logged in and the text you see here is actually some clues for our next Hack the Box challenge. Down at the bottom, we also have a flag to complete this section. So we've just hacked a website login. Now it's worth noting that most sites we use today, like Facebook, Instagram, etc., will have account lockouts. This means that after a few tries, you'll be locked out of your account for a set period of time. This dramatically reduces the effectiveness of these attacks because you can't try lots and lots of passwords all at once. Now, a great way to make sure that your accounts are protected against these types of attacks is to make sure you enable multi-factor authentication. This way, even if an attacker does get your login credentials, they still need that second factor, which is usually a code on your mobile. So that is how we can force our way into website login forms using Hydra. Hydra is a great tool and it can even be used to brute force services such as FTP and SSH. If you like this video, you will really love the module on Hack the Box Academy. They cover everything I just did and much, much more. So go check it out in the description. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe. The support from you guys really helps this channel grow. Thank you for watching.